At the start of the 20th century, the fortified city walls are dismantled. The Pontedolf Bridge is inaugurated in 1903. It is a powerful symbol of the new Luxembourg. No longer bound by its walls, the city is free to expand. In 1912, Princess Marie Adelaide accedes to the throne. She is only 18 and ill-prepared for her role as Grand Duchess, but she assumes it and reigns with determination. For six weeks, she refuses to sign the school law limiting the influence of the church in primary education. She arbitrarily dissolves parliament and refuses the appointment of high government officials. In 1914, while a young woman is finding her feet as Grand Duchess in Luxembourg, an Archduke is assassinated in Sarajevo. World War I breaks out. Despite guarantees of neutrality given in 1867 by the main European powers, Luxembourg is occupied in 1914 by German troops. The government and the sovereign, who is widely criticised for her pro-German sympathies, have to run day-to-day -day political affairs in an occupied country. The civilian population suffers terribly from lack of food and fuel caused by wartime supply problems and extremely harsh winters. Political awareness grows among industrial workers. In 1917, strikes by coal and steel workers in the mining industry are brutally crushed by the German army. A year later, a Soviet calls for Luxembourg to be declared a republic. Marie Adelaide is forced to abdicate in favor of her younger sister, Charlotte. In September 1919, the new sovereign is confirmed in a referendum based for the first time on universal suffrage. However, in Parliament and in the factories, opposition continues. In 1921, widespread strikes and social unrest among workers are again brutally crushed, this time by the French army. In 1933, Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. But the Luxembourg government sees him as less of a threat than the Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. The fear of communism explains the so-called Muzzling Law, passed by Parliament in 1937 to allow the banning of the Communist Party. The law is, however, rejected by referendum. While Nazi Germany tightens its grip on Europe, Luxembourg celebrates 100 years of independence. But a new storm is gathering on the horizon. On the 10th of May 1940, Nazi troops invade Luxembourg. In exile, first in London, then in the United States, Grand Duché Charlotte becomes, from a distance, the symbol of Luxembourg's independence. Back home, meanwhile, the Nazis attempt to Germanize Luxembourg. All political institutions are dissolved and Luxembourg becomes part of the Third Reich. From September 1940 onwards, the rights of Luxembourg Jews are abolished, their property seized and their synagogues destroyed. Few Luxembourgers protest in public, however, when young men are forcibly enrolled in the Wehrmacht in late August 1942, strikes break out all over the country. While the resistance movements get organised, other Luxembourgers take advantage of the occupation to advance their own careers. On the 10th of September 1944, the country is liberated by the Allied forces, but the war is not yet over. The Battle of the Bulge rolls over the north of the country in the winter of 1944-1945, causing considerable devastation and suffering. The two world wars have proved Luxembourg's neutrality to be just an illusion. The country is definitely no island, safe from the harsh realities of world events. 1947 sees the foundation of Benelux. For some, this is the first step on the road to a united Europe, from the economic community of the 1957 Treaty of Rome through to the Schengen Agreements of 1985. Four of Luxembourg's prime ministers will play an important role in European integration. In the 2005 referendum, just 56% of Luxembourgers vote in favour of the European Constitution. For some observers, this shows a waning of support for the European ideal. Today, Luxembourg's political independence is no longer being questioned.
The country does, of course, remain dependent on the outside world. To quote former Prime Minister Gaston Torn, the smaller the country is, the bigger the outside world is.